thanks for tuning in. Uh, it takes me around four to five foam boards to build the whole aircraft, so let's get right to it. We could rebuild, or we could see rebuilds as an opportunity to change and improve on the previous system. So this is what we're changing. So the first is the Elevon design. I first designed these Elevons, uh, hoping to reduce drag and keep the aspect ratio low and not break up the airflow within the aircraft. But the thing is that this didn't work too well because the hinges were at the bottom and that gives us more room when it comes down to, to move the ailerons down but moving it up it doesn't give us that much space. Anyways, uh, that's why I had to add these things at the end. So what we're changing is the hinge isn't at the bottom this time, it's at the top. I'm hoping to not add on an extra piece of uh, foam board at the back but I'm hoping that the hinge at the end will have enough surface area. Okay, so update on what's changed with the aircraft. Uh, the aircraft had vertical stabilizers here. After a couple flights, I kept on cutting them off, cutting them off, cutting them off to see if the aircraft would still be stable on the yaw axes afterwards. And I managed to get them all off with the exception of these uh, at the wingtips. So less drag, uh, less drag on the airplane overall. That's one. Two, the second thing that's changed, in, in my opinion, the most important is the Elevon design. So now the hinge is at the top instead of being at the bottom. This is the old airplane, by the way. Say you had 30 degrees of deflection, whatever. The air would only be hitting this much, this part of the wing or so on and so forth. You see how there's not a lot of surface area that's hitting the airflow. And that's why I had to add a little bit of... And that's why I had to add a little bit of extra uh, at the end to increase the surface area here. Because then, otherwise, the aircraft would basically have no control. But, once I did that, with the same amount of throw, with the same deflection, you now have more, more surface area. A lot more surface area to work with. Anyway, so we changed the sweep angle. So if we put this on top of this, and line it all up, we can see that this, the previous airplane, was 45 degrees, the wings were further back. And while, yes, this did increase pitch stability, I checked on XFLR5 and saw that our coefficient of moment wasn't changing that much to warrant me to be scared of instability. So those are the three changes on the aircraft. I'm a shy guy. Find I twiddle in my fingers in the corner at a party Cause I'm bored of always starting a conversation that dies Amalgamation devices of getting people to talk I'm wishing that I was psychic She fiddling on her psychic Probably texting Superman I'm watching how she move her hands Plotting all these who's and when's No tricks up my slave Cause my cards are all in play And she tells me that I lost I forgot what was the game Y'all shuffle the deck again Mumble that we best as friends And I agree wholeheartedly But we can be men and friends I won't care Feelings. Was never good at sports or paying attention Never something that I could afford I'm broke, honey No money to buy you flowers or take you out on a date We can eat out in the shower That's a five-star restaurant My God, what a spot Didn't expect rain Next day, bring an umbrella pot None of this happens I'm in the corner, twiddle thumbs Just imagine it The second thing we're changing is the Chevron Wing Extenders Sweep. So those things you see right there, these uh, sweep things, they're called Chevron Wing Extenders. I designed them in my senior year of high school to solve the pitch stability problem on plank style flying wings. Basically what they do is act similarly to horizontal stabilizers on normal aircraft. So the aircraft is flapping in flight, sort of like this. So what we're going to try to do is change the torsional rigidity of the aircraft from front to back. The optimal angle is around 40-45 degrees and we're going to be changing ours to 40 degrees in hopes to bringing the main wings up a little bit. Now this is going to affect the stability and let me explain. The upside is the aircraft is still a plank flying wing so you retain your lifting capabilities that you all want from an efficient aircraft but you're also stable this time. And on top of all of that stuff, since the fuselage or the nose of the aircraft is further forward, it's easier to um, get your center of, ba uh, center of gravity balanced correctly. So you don't have to use ballast or any other heavy stuff. So you can keep the wing loading low, so you can keep the flight weight low and save more weight for your payload. Now, this is going to affect our stability. It's going to reduce our stability. But as I modeled it on XFLR5 here, I uh, compared many, many different aircrafts. 
XFLR5. I've modeled all of our aircraft here with the 30 degree flying wing, with the 30 degree swept chevron extended wing, this is 30 degrees, with the 45 degree one, and as a control group I've also modeled a normal traditional swept flying wing and a plank flying wing to compare everything to. Now, to get to stability, we first have to understand what coefficient of moment is. So what coefficient of moment for the pitch axes is the aircraft's inherent force to push it in some direction. If the aircraft has a positive coefficient of moment, then that means the nose of the aircraft is being pushed up. Now, coefficient of moment changes with the angle of attack. What we want to see is an inverse relationship of coefficient of moment and angle of attack. Here's what I mean that you see right here designates the coefficient of uh, moment. If we have a negative angle of attack, we see that this arrow right here pushes the tail down. This is the coefficient of moment pushing the tail of the aircraft down, which in turn pushes the nose of the aircraft up, which tries to bring it to neutral position. If we have a positive angle of attack, that means we have a negative coefficient of moment, which pushes the nose down. So, what do we get? What can we gather from this? We can gather that wherever the aircraft is, it's going to be pushing itself towards neutral position, which is zero degrees angle of attack. We call this positive static stability, the aircraft's inherent stability to push itself to neutral position. This aircraft is stable. Now, once we go to the plank flying wing, we see that if we go back to the graphs right here and look at the plank flying wing, which is the red, we can see that this aircraft does not have the proper moment that we're looking for. At 10 degrees angle of attack, it barely has any force acting on it. And if this force was even greater, it would be positive. Meaning if the aircraft had a positive angle of attack, the aircraft would push itself even further from neutral position. This is an unstable aircraft. With the 30 degree swept aircraft, which we can see with the green right here, we can see that at positive angles of attack, it has a negative coefficient of moment, which tr uh, which means it tries to push itself to neutral position. This is what we're looking for. The white is the 45 degree swept aircraft, which is what we had before. Since now I changed it to 30 degrees swept, the coefficient of moment, which is the stable forces acting on the aircraft, are less, but they're still viable, they're still useful, and they still push the aircraft to neutral position, which means this aircraft is still stable. This is honestly probably one of the best purchases I've made in a while, the drafting pencil. Usually, if you're the type like me, like I used to lose pencils on a daily basis, buy like those packs of 20 pencils, and like I'd hate it, you know, always showing up to class unprepared. I bought this pencil, $10, and like I actually valued it. I guess that's what made me not lose it. I've had it for about a year and what, three months now? Something like that. Yeah, I tried to copy the MH60 airfoil as much as I could, but you know. The airfoil on these is really, really eyeballed. So, I mean, it only gets better from here is I guess is what I'm saying. The first question comes from Mello Cooper on Reddit. He asked, other than the programming challenges, are there any other reasons not to use an already advanced autopilot system like the Pixhawk or the APM? And not really. Just that it would be incredibly focused just on our particular design, the bank angles, the flight slope, the glide slope, the calculations that it uses. It would be incredibly focused on this one singular aircraft. Plus, we want to automate everything, and the Pixhawk can't do that. We would need extra six uh, systems if we were using the Pixhawk. So we would need an Arduino that would um, get the barometer's readings at 100,000 feet. By the way, the barometer on board the Pixhawk, it doesn't work all the way up at 100,000 feet. So you would need an external barometer for that as well. So anyways, um, the Arduino would sense it and activate the release mechanism, and then it would send a signal to the Pixhawk to do something, or maybe on the ground control we would do something, so so on and so forth. It's just different systems that would be separated out. Of course, in prototypes and proof of concepts, we're probably going to have to end up using Pixhawk. So, we, don't want, we just want to have an incredibly focused system that works better with our aircraft. We want to have one system, one automated system, just the Arduino with its own GPS and barometer, rather than having the Pixhawk, Arduino, external barometer, external GPS, and then the Pixhawk's GPS and barometer. So, 
what? Get pop set, keep your elbows off the table when you eat. No tell them what I'll be able if I believe them myself. The next question comes from God Mango on Reddit, and this is probably our biggest issue. The FAA, that's what he's wondering about. The FAA. And God Mango's wondering how we're gonna get through the FAA about this, because obviously we're going to be going into Class A airspace where airliners fly, where airplanes, actual airplanes fly. Well, the FAA has a place where you can apply to be allowed to fly that high. You apply, they look through your program, they look through your flight plan, so on and so forth, and, and they work with you. The problem is this takes months and months to fulfill, or to finish. So that's the that's our solution about this. B Tree Cat, he told me, or he wrote in the thread that um, they let rockets who have to appease the FAA we're going to have multiple multiple backups and safeties and redundancies so and obviously I don't want to crash into a real airplane either so it's not just for the FAA it's so the mission goes properly we're going to have a parachute on the aircraft anyway so at the worst part we're just going to be taking down a payload of one or like 700 800 grams or one kilogram by a parachute, which high altitude balloons do all the time. So I don't necessarily see a huge problem with it, but the FAA is definitely going to see a problem with it. So we're gonna we're gonna try to work with them. It's just pull up, dude. Nice video. 3:30 was sick AF. Keep it up. What was in 3:30? Run that by me one more time. Um, I'm playing with Eshef, he's my childhood friend, so, you know, cool project guys, anyways, I'm wondering if you have a, if you have made a test flight for your glider with the motor attached, I guess the center of gravity will make your aircraft hard to control, correct, we have made a uh, test flight with it, you can see that in the previous video. So, and another question by B Tree Cat. Um, what are we using for our one watt telemetry? For one watt telemetry, we're using the uh, Orange RX system. There's a mod that you can use if you bump the power from 3.3 volts logic to 5 volts. There's a mod that you can use to bump the power up to one watt. And the telemetry receiver is one watt as well from Orange RX. Um, don't shorten the span from front to back. That will make the pitch stability worse and CG harder to balance. Exactly. Exactly. Very true. But XFLR5 hasn't let me down so far. And what's the point of prototyping if you can't make any mistakes, right? XFLR5 says that the, set, uh, the coefficient of moment, which is basically what I'm using for stability on the pitch axis, won't really be that terrible. Also, it seems like you're running a lot of reflex on the elevators, which means more drag, quicker stall, and probably nose heavy. True. The aircraft is nose heavy. I was running it nose heavy uh, initially because I hadn't found the perfect center of gravity for this aircraft with the motor on yet, so that's why I was running it nose heavy. Where's my name go? Don't break my heart, OP. You better follow up and see this through. I love the idea. I love the DIY from ground up approach. I'm sorry, <laughs> we messed up. Video has truly epic potential, so I'm excited, I'm subscribed, and I'm emotionally invested. I am so sorry that we missed the Eclipse deadline. I don't know how I'm going to make it up to you guys. Question as well about heat. Ask any HVAC mechanic, uh, architect, I don't know, home designer, whoever those are. They're going to tell... They're going to tell you um, using insulation to maintain the temperature always takes less energy. So, and since battery is a problem with the, a problem for us, we're always trying to like minimize the and lower the capacity of our battery to to save weight. Where we can't just keep on pumping out heat, since our whole airplane is going to be made out of insulation material EPP. 
um, we are going to see that we're not going to have that much of a problem. We're probably good on that regard. Uh, we're still going to have the VTX. Our video system is probably going to be 2.4 gigahertz, 1 watt, and we're going to have a high gain antenna on the ground or 1.3 gigahertz, but most likely 2.4 because the antennas are vastly smaller, weigh a lot less, and still have a lot of uh, range. So that's why we're probably going to run with 2.4 gigahertz for video, but we're going to run with 433 megahertz for control, 1 watt on both ends.